जय श्री कृष्णा टू ऑल वेलकम टू पास टू आनंदम गीता सीरीज फ्रीडम फ्रॉम पेन्स एंड मिजरीज टू हैप्पी हेल्दी एंड पीसफुल लाइफ बेस्ड ऑन हंड्रेड एंड एट मंत्रास टू अवेकन यूअर सोल एंड श्रीमद भागवत गीता my question and god's answers and today's subject is know the true nature of god and pranam to swami hari har ji maharaj for his blessings bringing us all together and motivating us through his sushma sharir through his infinite power to get together speak about gita discuss about gita i'm satya kalra your host and founder of path to ananda how to live the blissful life by removing all the vices all the vishad in our life anger greed fear worries stress and live the li- righteous life and this message is being delivered through zoom to all of our different channels as well other social media to many other organizations and groups and whatever you see on this page all these books cds this is all the blessing of swami hari har ji maharaj with his guidance in fact i would say with, with his adesh with his order to me that is start writing the books and first i laughed when he told me this personally and i think after 10 15 years the things start moving forward and one by one his dream start coming true through me so pranam to swami ji again coming in my life and to lord krishna so today's series 49 know the true nature of god the previous series last week series was know who is god and today we are talking about know the true nature of god based on gita's verses chapter 7 10 and 11 and during this i'll be covering who is the source of creation what is the true nature of god and why to know god what am i going to get out of it what is for me here and then how would i practice it in daily life and some of the practices i will focus through my homework and the sankalpa for today is i know god's brilliance i know his glory and meditation and question and answers and again starting with as the gita started with arjuna's vishad yog where he was so overpowered with his emotions negative emotions and he gave up and he says na jyotas siddhi gobindam i'm not going to get into this bloody war in this kurukshetra war for him it was the bloody war war full of greed since not a dharma war not a dharma kshetra not a dharma yuddh 
but it was to gain the worldly possessions because of greed. And so here, when he was totally overwhelmed with his attachments to his family members, confused whether he should get engaged in this war or not. Finally, he gives up. He gives up. And when he gave up, he had no other way to get out of it but turn around to his dear friend, Arjuna, who was his charioteer in, during this war. And he prays to him and he asks for his guidance. And he humbly prays and surrenders to him. So let's all pray to Lord Krishna and remove our vishad, our confusion, because we are the Arjunas of today. Karpanye dosho swabhava Pashyami twam dharm samur cheta Jacha sai siyani nishchitam bruitan me Chishyas deham shadi mam tum prapanyam Chishyas deham shadi mam tum prapanyam My heart is overpowered by the weakness of pity. I have lost all my composure. And my mind is confused about my duty, dharma. I am requesting you to tell me what is definitely good for me, not because what I'm asking for it. Guide me what is definitely good for me. I am your disciple. I surrender to you. Please instruct me. And by this prayer, request. Lord Krishna blessed Arjuna with this infinite wisdom, Shirimad Bhagavad Gita. And he understood. And then he got up here and he says to Lord Krishna, Karshe Vachanam Tau, I do as you advise, so let's go, move on. So that blissful journey for self-purification, self-transformation, which uplifted Arjuna. So let's all get on that charioter of Lord Krishna, his chariot. And because he's, the, he's our charioter, so let's give the reign of our life in his hands and experience Satchit Ananda. So Lord Krishna started guiding Arjuna, pouring his blessing through Karma Yoga because Gita is divided into three sections. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Gyan Yoga. And we call the first Karma Yoga chapter up to six, one to six, where he fully guided him taught him what is karma yoga, how to convert each karma into dharma. And then now we are on the next uh, session, Bhakti Yoga, which is chapter from 7 to 12. And very first chapter of this Bhakti Yoga is Gyan Vigyan Yoga. Wisdom, not just by studying books, listening, but actually practicing and experiencing it. So gyan, just getting the knowledge, but we gyan when we truly experience it. So Lord Krishna is taking him step by step, removing one ignorance of him and taking him to the essence of life, which is the Satchit Anand. So in previous session, we learned who is God and where to find him?
and Lord Krishna guided Arjuna, declared to him that he is the essence. He is everywhere like the string in the pulse. He is that energy which flows through every living being and non-living being in the universe. Because universe is made with both matter and energy. Whatever we see with our eyes, that is all matter. But whatever flows within us, that energy. And here he explains him further that this nature prakriti is made with these five elements where sun and moon and fire and air and sky and water and earth, all these are my elements. But human beings have three more elements in them, which is the mind, intellect, which call buddhi, mind, buddhi, and then ego. So his energy flows, and here he says, just like a pulse, so every pearl is the form of this universe. Every individual, every living being and non-living being are considered to be the moti of this mala. And here I kind of try to get that graphic where it explains how it goes into the body, how it goes to the mind and how the whole current is flowing in the universe, in the nature, in the living beings and the non-living being. And simple example here is, as all the appliances are run with one thing, which is a current. Without current, our dishwasher will not run, our refrigerator will not run, our food processor will not run, our ovens will not run, and they are all operating based on the one thing and which is a current. And that current is the supreme power. But Lord Krishna says, that is even a small part of me. He explains further that I am in Kankan and Chanchar. Anything and everything you see in this universe is me. But then, actually in Bhagavad Gita, he explains three ways. He says, I am present in Sakar Roop. And he shows the Sakar Roop to Arjuna, a Vishwa Roop. And in this nature, in Prakriti, anything we see in this universe is me. Again, he shows, explains in chapter 11 also. And it, until now, he also is explaining. In chapter 13, he will explain again. But he also explains and guides us and tells Arjuna, don't just think that I am the one you just see this body. I am beyond that. I am that formless Om. The energy of the Om is me. So when you see God with body, that's Sakar Rup. But when you see God without body, which is that is the Om, that is the formless. And all his creation, the universe is his Prakriti. So this is just a summary of what we discussed last week. So where to find God? Until now, God is the essence of all. He is the cause of all the causes. We are sitting here because he's guided us. When we part, he's guiding us. Whatever happens in our life, partaram, means in every situation, he is the one who is guiding. And then where to find God? God is presented in the different energies as Water, as mentioned in the five elements, the earth, water, air, sky, fire, everything is a form of his energy. So whatever we hear around us, whatever we smell, whatever we see, it's all his nature. But again, it is a prakriti, it is the external, it is a temporary. 
it is a matter but the permanent is the everlasting is the supreme soul his energy which flows the whole thing in the universe so now the next question comes if god is the essence of all how does he explain further to convince arjun because arjun is still confused and so are we you know we can say that god is here god uh, and we can feel him in the water but the question is can i when i drink the water do i really experience god and that's where god brings in our attention that when you drink water at that time just pause for a moment and the taste in the water is me the heat when you experience when we go to near the burner or near to the havan or anything we feel that heat or when we feel the heat within ourselves that is me when we cannot see the air oxygen around us but without oxygen we cannot survive similarly we cannot survive without his current his his presence and that's where he explains further and he says bijam mam sarva bhutanam vriddhi par sanatanam buddhir buddhi matasmi tej tejasvi nam aham i am the eternal seed of all being o arjuna the intellect of the intelligence and the brilliance of the brilliance is me and universe is operated all by me by my intellect by my energy so what happens when we see somebody very intelligent and we say oh how intelligent this person is and sometimes you know we feel jealous to how come this person is so intelligent and i am not or how come other somebody else child is more intelligent and my child is not how come other child child got into harvard and my child got only into ucsf or something you know so we all keep comparing it and here lord krishna guide us tells us that stop comparing because i am the intelligent in everything in every human being so when somebody is intelligent consider them just see them because it's my energy that's me so instead of feeling jealous in we be humble because it is all my doing it's me who is intelligent it's my brilliance my glory so focus on recognizing it and do not waste your energy otherwise feeling jealous or how can i am not intelligent and i cannot do this and other person is more intelligent and all that he says no just focus on me you will be as intelligent as i am because you and me are no different only difference between you and me is you are wasting your energy on the negative negativity and i am pure and the people who are more intelligent they are also focusing on particular subject for example somebody is more expert in certain field of medical somebody is mm, more specialized in neuro somebody is more heart special somebody is more on it part of it it's all coming from god it's a god's intelligence so we should respect them do the pranam to their intelligence and then here he says balam balvatam chaham kaam rag hi varjitam dharma viruddho bhuteshu kamo asmin bharasash o best of bharatas here lord krishna designate or address arjuna with different name the best of the bharatas sometime he says he kunte sometime he tells him arjuna sometime he tells him mahabhav 
whatever he's trying to motivate him, trying to make him understand by calling him with different names. Sometimes, you know, when we call people with my dear, my sweetie, my darling, my this, because we have a different way of speaking to person by motivating them, expressing our love. So God is here. Lord Krishna is motivating Arjuna by naming him differently here. And he says, in a strong person, I am their strength. Before he says, I am the intellect. Here he's saying, I am the strength. Do, but what kind of strength? Devoid of desire and passion. And he also says, I am the sexual activity not conflicting with virtual or scriptural injunctions. What he means here is, again, as he said, I am the energy. So God's higher energy is in the our higher desires. Desires are two types. One is a worldly desire. Other one is desire for self-salvation, reaching to Paramdham. Those are the only two desires we have. So the desires which we have for selfish reasons, I want this, I want car, I want house, I want this, I want so many worldly desires are there. Or sometimes people like terrorists, they want to hurt others. Some people want to hurt others or say certain things which they in unintentionally, but they hurt others. Those energies are the lower desires and lower energies. And those energies are controlled by our lower desires, worldly desires. But when we have the higher desire, that desire is, I want to realize supreme power. I want to experience. And then Lord Krishna says, there are many ways you can do it. Karma yoga, selfless service, help others, care for others, express your love, and use your energy to protect others, like Arjuna, he's saying, you do your karma yoga. So get up and protect the society. And Meera, Bhakti, Wisdom, Guru Nanak Ji. So Lord uses this energy through people. This is the God's energy. But the people who follow the Supreme Power's teachings, where the name is Gita or Ramayana, whatever, but here I'm talking about the Gita's teachings, then here it says, follow Gita's teachings, use your energy, resources, like we have money, abilities, whatever we have, the message here is, use your resources, use your energy for the good causes, whether you have a extra money to share, whether you have ability to speak, share Bhagavad Gita's teaching, do seva, whatever you can do, but to serve his creation and uplift ourselves by doing that through karma yoga, through bhakti yoga, through jnana, through wisdom, we will uplift. So this is what we should be utilizing our services, protect the society, become the activist, because God gives us the messages. He uses people. He performs all of his actions through people. As I mentioned, he used Guru Nanak Ji, Arjun, Swami Hari Ji Maharaj, the preacher of Bhagavad Gita, the guiding. So he uses, so he's basically saying here is, use this energy for good causes, for good things for good desires and do not waste your energy on negativity, being selfish, complaining or worrying, living in fear. All those are the form of negative energies as he explained before. He also mentioned, this is a very, this question comes all the time. God says, I'm in the sexual activities. Then what's the wrong with it? Why these Mahatmas? 
sannyasis don't get involved with that and they say forbidden it but then some of that so much corruption is going on and behind the door so many things happen so here god says yes i am in that but it has to be followed according to what says in scripture in scripture it says everything has a fine line to draw you have the body you have the hormones in the body which will active excite you which will pull you through your activities however there is a limit to it one should not be a playboy or play girl and just you know extra marital affairs or premarital affairs etc but it should be to the people who got married who want to have children but is still not driving just with that energy but use that energy to bring the sanskaric children in this world who can do the best for the universe so during that activity or during the pregnancy all god's name should be recited so the children get also the same energy same vibration and when they are born they also become a part of the society to serve the society and not become the selfish people so how to practice how so then we can get the benefit from it because the but now lord krishna is saying that we have to experience it his energy we have to realize it not just talking and not just speaking and discussing and because he's in kankan chanchan mein and the answer is which he already explained in chapter 6 dhyan yog be mindfulness of me and whatever my form whatever you are drawn toward whether you are drawn toward the form lord krishna's image lord krishna's murti lord, then that's okay at the same time you can serve me through my nature prakriti and then the third form nirguna formless in the form of mantras you can do the through the mantras whatever suits you but must practice because presence of god must be experienced and then we can realize he so as it says again god is both manifested and unmanifested form he is in the human form human body's form like rama krishna and their extended gurus but we can experience him through mantras the whole reason for that is to develop the faith devotion do seva surrender to him and lord krishna says once you do that have a faith in me surrender to me you are on the path of self purification so whatever the shortcomings we have the toxicity we have the vishad we have the complaints in our system the previous sanskaras in our mind we have which says garbage in our mind i will call that whatever we have it will all purify detoxicate and then we transform and through that transportation with all these vehicles we reach to the ultimate destination which is the purpose of life realize who am i i am that infinite happiness peace anandam which is in summary it is called sat chit anand infinite truth in my chit in my consciousness which is called sat chit anand so we experience but then we practice it how we practice it in the morning get up in the morning this is such a important powerful tool and i try to present it every time to bring it that this is a 30 days planner developing the equanimity samta 
once we are calm, we can see, we can feel it, like we can see it all the way bottom of the lake when the water is totally calm and clean. Our mind, our heart gets very purified by doing these activities. So in the morning, we can decide chapter 12, we can decide eight mantras, 108 mantras of Om or three mantras, what or study Bhagavad Gita, read Guru, uh, Guru Granth Sahib, Ramayana, whatever is suits to our personality or whatever we are used to it. But it aligns our morning with rest of the day. And then we should take care of our body. We spend some time. I ideally say one hour, 20 minute yoga, 20 minute pranayama, and 20 minutes meditation. But if it is not possible, do it only 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes, whatever time you have. But live in that kind consciousness, mindfulness that I have to take care of my body. I have to align my day in the morning. And then one message. Whatever improvement I need to do, whatever practice I need to do, just take that and live in that awareness. And then in the evening, after practicing, sit down before going to bed or in the evening and sit down and evaluate, how did I do it today? And if we kind of did not meet our expectation, do not have to pound ourselves Oh, I'm lazy, I'm stupid, I did it again, I cannot do it. No, not that. Just say, good, I did it today, I did it maybe five times, I wanted to do it nine times, I did it five times, that's okay. Another five times, I will try to do it one more time, two more times tomorrow, and then meditate upon it, and then pray to God and say, thank you, God, for helping me through this today. And do your best and then let go. Sarva Dharman Paritaje, Ma Mekam Sharanam Braj, Aham Tam Prapebyo, Moksha Shami Mashuchi. I will remove all of your misdeeds, all of your paths. You just live in the consciousness of mine and I will take care of remaining. So just before going to bed, just go to bed and say, God, I am in your lap now. Just surrender to him. And now you take care of my whole night, my thoughts, my dreams. And once we do that, you will notice gradually by gradually the life starts changing. So this is a summary of the whole day, how we are going to do the homework. This is our homework. So we have to live in the awareness. Whatever we do, and then, as I said, self-inquiry, so swadhyaya bhyasnam, because Lord Krishna says over and over, adhyaya, swadhyaya, swadhyaya, abhyasam, 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 swadhyaya, focus on ourself, not on finding the faults on others, but focusing on self-inquiry. So, self, as I said, self-inquiry is not the sign of weakness, but it's moving forward, experiencing Sat Chitananda. So the questions we ask, any questions what is pertaining to you, but this is a basically summary of the questions. Where and how I use my energies? Do I just do the selfish karma or do I convert into dharma, selfless karmas with love and compassion? for sarva bhutite rata, for benefit of the whole universe. Do I live according to Gita's teachings? How do I contribute to the God's universe, prakriti? Question, am I an activist? Do I, what do I do? That's a very good question to ask. Am I selfish or practicing selfishness just for my, am I living just for myself? Am I just gaining the theoretical knowledge or am I practicing it? Do I experience his presence? And his presence again, Vasudev Kutumkam. It is through his prakriti. 
is the best way to experience by sharing, caring, loving, helping others. So, Sankalpa for today is, I know the power of God. I know the brilliance of God. Once I am on this path, I stop experiencing but the Sankalpa Prabhavan, the Prabhav of Sankalpa, the effect of Sankalpa, but the Sankalpa has to be, here it says, Kamasya Takva, without my worldly desires, but only for attaining the supreme power, experience supreme power, then gradually, little by little, by with Bhagavad Gita's teachings, our hearts will get filled with love, peace, and compassion. But again, this is a slow process. So we must have a patience to experience the ultimate presence of God, happiness, healthiness, and peacefulness in our life. That who am I? I am Satchit Ananda. So thank you very much for knowing the God's true nature and being a part of the series of freedom from pains and miseries to happy, healthy, and peaceful life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, don't even have to